So hi everyone, I'm Tanya Baroni. I'm a PhD student at the Australian National University. So I'll be presenting basically the accumulation of all my work throughout my PhD, which is tied up really nicely in this final project, which has been about linking um, stellar population scaling relations across the mass size plane from low redshift using the um, predominantly the Sunny Galaxy Survey to the intermediate redshifts of legacy, specifically around um, 0 0.6 to 0 0.76 in redshift. So when we're looking at the mass size plane, especially at redshift zero, we're seeing the combined effect of both the evolution of an individual galaxy throughout its lifetime, but also the evolution of the population due to the change in population members. So for example, if we're looking at the star forming sequence as new galaxies form and as galaxies quench, you have old um, new members added and old members leave. And so you have both this change in the population due to um, what constitutes its members and in the evolution of the members themselves. And it um, can be really difficult trying to disentangle um, what's causing or what's leading to the scaling relations that we see at low redshift. So the work that I'll be mainly focusing on today builds on the previous work of my PhD um, at low redshift. So specifically, we looked at early type and star forming galaxies at low redshift, and we looked at how they vary in the mass size plane. And quite remarkably, despite different um, samples, different um, methods and templates used, we found these two key results. Firstly, that the global stellar metallicity correlates best with the gravitational potential. And secondly, that the age correlates best with the surface mass density. And when I say best, I mean that it has the least intrinsic scatter and least residual trend of, um, with size compared to other combinations of mass and size or mass alone. And so what we're doing now is we're extending this to intermediate redshift galaxies. We want to see how these scaling relations exhibit at intermediate redshifts. And we want to do this because we want to test the hypotheses that we have for these scaling relations. So for the metallicity potential relation, we propose that it's due to the gravitational potential really being the dominant um, the dominant factor determining the metallicity by, by, the, by the relation to the escape velocity. So it determines how, um, how much metals are retained in the system. Um, so while stellar mass will determine how many metals are made, it's the potential that determines the retention of those metals. So supernova ejector, um, stellar winds will eject metals and um, depending on the, how deep the gravitational potential well will determine how like the fraction that's retained to be recycled into later stellar generations. And so as you can see, there's quite a bit of supporting evidence for this to show that, um, to explain this, this dependence between um, the gravitational potential and stellar metallicity. As it's also been found um, in radial measurements, so within galaxies, and also with the gas phase metallicity. So for the age relation, um, so our hypothesis for this was that um, older galaxies simply formed earlier. So compact galaxies formed earlier um, and they formed, compact galaxies formed earlier when the universe had a higher gas fraction in the earlier universe and this led to higher star formation rate densities. So it's essentially a fossil record of the kennicott schmidt relation. So we originally, um, in our when we were first looking at early type galaxies, we had a long discussion about whether this relation in early types could be due to compactness driven quenching mechanisms. However, when we then found that the same relation or the age surface density correlation also exists in star forming galaxies, um, we therefore believe that it must originate before quenching. Um, it's highly unlikely that you would have the same relation from two different mechanisms. Okay, so these are our hypotheses and how 
how we're going to test them using legacy. So for the metallicity potential relation, as I said, we believe it's um, a causal relation. So it should affect individual galaxies. Um, and so we also expect there to be a correlation at intermediate redshifts. It may be, um, it may be slightly different depending on um, how feedback processes and stuff mation processes change with redshift, but we still expect there to be a relation, a correlation between metallicity and gravitational potential at intermediate redshifts. Conversely, because the age surface density relation is built up over time, um, there may be a change in the correlation or there may not be a correlation at all, depending on, um, I guess, how rapidly it builds up. And as I said, whether compaction driven mechanisms may further emphasize the relation in, in um, quiescent galaxies, um, but whether we'll be able to resolve it in star forming galaxies at intermediate redshifts or not. So what we do is we look at um, a sample of um, a few hundred early type, gal sorry, quiescent galaxies in legacy. And we're looking here at how they vary in the mass size plane. So in the top panel is a low redshift comparison sample from the SAMI survey, SAMI Galaxy Survey based here in Australia. And then the middle panel is legacy galaxies with a redshift of 0.6 to 0.68. And then the bottom panel is um, legacy galaxies from 0.68 to 0.76. So we've got low redshift at the top and then high redshift at the bottom. So these are all mass size planes and the color scale represents global stellar metallicity. And as you can see in all three redshift fins, stellar metallicity varies in the same way. So um, in all three redshift fins, we see that metallicity varies along lines of constant potential, which is the dashed lines. And I've just sort of highlighted that with these gray arrows. And so this really supports our hypothesis because we would ex we should expect to see this if um, met if it's the gravitational potential, the retention of metals, that's really the dominant factor in the stellar metallicity. Um, we then now look at age. So once again, we've got the semi galaxies at the top, legacy um, 0 0.6 to 6.8 to 0 0.68 and then legacy um, 0.68 to 76. So once again, low, medium, high redshift. Um, and here the color map represents age. So unlike metallicity, which showed the same variation in all three redshift fins, there's a huge change in how age varies in the mass size plane across redshift. So if we start with the lowest um, panel, so the highest redshift bin, the age varies along the mass size relation. So um, the oldest galaxies are both the uh, largest and the most massive. If we look in the um, middle redshift panel, there's no clear age variation. So I'll note as well that these color maps have been smoothed using the lowest smoothing just to highlight the trends better. Um, we also do this um, analytically. And then in the lowest redshift bin, um, as we found um, in our 2018 and 2020 studies, age varies perpendicular to the mass size relation. So um, closely along lines of constant um, surface mass density. So the dotted lines. So why this um, significant change in the age variation across the mass size plane. We wanted to see if we can link this to how our galaxies evolve in the mass size plane um, and whether we can really just explain it as being the result of, um, of compact galaxies forming earlier. So here um, I'm showing a, a um, figure adapted from Mahler at all 2019. So they um, built on the results of Vanderbilt 2014 um, analyzing how the mass size plane evolves with or changes with redshift for both the quiescent and star forming um, sequences. And crucially, what they show is that the slope of the quiescent sequence um, stays relatively constant with redshift at about a slope of 0 0.5. 
And this is really important because a slope of 0.5 in the mass size plane reflects a constant surface mass density um, as shown by these um, little equations here. So we reproduce these results. So once again, the mass size planes for the three redshift bins of SAMI um, legacy and um, higher redshift legacy galaxies. And indeed we find that um, the quiescent galaxies have a slope of about 0 0.5. So this isn't new, this is just um, reproducing old results. But crucially, as I mentioned, this slope of 0 0.5 means reflects a constant surface mass density. And so if we change the y-axis from being galaxy size to being surface density, we find the quiescent sequences are now flat. But crucially, they, it changes with, re with redshift as we'd expect, because we know that um, at higher redshift galaxies, the intercept in the mass size plane is um, is lower, so that reflects it being more compact. And as it, we see here, if we look in the low red, the um, low redshift sample, it's a less compact than the high redshift sample. So let's frame this back in terms of the mass size plane, which is um, how we're all used to thinking of um, thinking of things. And so um, using some well-known results. So we have that star forming galaxies evolve along the relation in the mass size plane. And also they follow approximately parallel tracks um, where their starting point sort of depends on redshift. So galaxies at high redshift are smaller at fixed mass. Okay, they evolve I'm along the mass size go. plane. And Sorry. then... Uh, Three minutes to go. Uh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, thanks. Um, so they evolve along the mass size plane. Um, and then we have sort of young galaxies um, up here, old ones here. So if we um, shift this to the mass surface density plane, this is the picture. So this is the same information, just um, shifted, just looking at it in a new way. So if we change the y-axis to surface density, we once again have high redshift galaxies that's more compact, so higher surface density. They evolve along the sequence um, until they quench. And given the slopes in the mass size plane, these become, um, the star forming sequence goes to about a slope of 0 0.4, the quiescent sequence to about zero. So if I put these side by side, this is just to reiterate that this is the same information, just looking at it in a new way. And crucially, it's this flat, um, it's this constant surface mass density that is really important for us to explain why we then get a relation between age and surface density um, in the redshift zero population. It's because we're building up the quiescent or we're building up the redshift zero population with galaxies that have formed and evolved at a huge range of redshifts and therefore at a range of surface densities. So for example, if we look at um, just a snapshot of galaxies at high redshift, we'd get like a very narrow sequence in this mass surface density plane. And then at, slight, at a more intermediate redshift, we have the same sequences, but just less compact. And again, less compact again. And so when we're looking at redshift zero, we're seeing the combination of all of these populations. And so we're seeing galaxies that quenched, um, quenched in the very early universe were very compact and so they're very old. Um, and then galaxies that have more recently quenched are much younger. And this is why we see this redshift zero age surface density relation. It's not a, doesn't reflect a causal correlation um, rather, it is a consequence of the evolution of the mass size plane with redshift. So um, to summarize, we've really um, spent a lot of my PhD looking at these two relations and trying to identify them, analyze them and hypothesize what's causing them. 
So firstly, the metallicity gravitational potential relation exists at both at low and intermediate redshifts. And this is a causal relation because the gravitational potential determines the escape velocity required for metal rich gas to be ejected from the system and avoid being recycled into later generations. Um, and so at redshift zero, there is a strong correlation between age and surface density, but not at intermediate redshifts. And that's because this age surface density relation is built up over time and is the consequence of galaxies quenching at different or like characteristic surface densities that depend on redshift. Um, and I'll leave it there. Thank you.